It's the Jim Fannin Show. We've come to take your mind. Am I still on? Dad, at your service. Hold on tight. Let it fade over on me. I'm Jim Fannin. Welcome aboard. Multiple technical difficulties surrounding me this fine morning it is 4 10 a.m <laughs> maybe where you are maybe it's 5 10 a.m i don't know okay let's hit this first of all before i start i'm just going to play the video and kind of break it down and and roll with it as we get into it here. Uh, comment. I'm going to pause and start, pause and start and comment. But before we get rolling on that, let me just say a few things about JBP. Um, first of all, one of the greatest communicators of our time. And man, I love communicators. So, and deep thinkers. I call Dr. Jordan B. Peterson Uncle Dad. Not only is he one of the greatest thinkers of all time, of our time, and of all time maybe, but he's one of the greatest communicators also. Deeply intellectual, and his language and communica uh, communication skills are unmatched. N not like mine. <laughs> He doesn't uh, overplay the doctor title. You know people that have those honorary doctors before their name or those letters after their name where they're not really a doctor. He's a clinical psychologist, and he doesn't, he doesn't insist on being called doctor all the time. That's awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to play a little bit of this and have a little bit of commentary as we roll. A wing and a prayer, or the enemy. This has okay, this has to stop. <laughs> Speaking the titles, um, hey, Doc, why don't you pick one? Is this the new Dr. Peterson? I mean, has he shifted his personality significantly and found God since his near-death experience with overcoming a Benzo del and what benzo dependency? What's it called? Benzo diazepine. It would appear so, and I called it. I predicted that he would find God in his most troubling times, as so many of us do. So normally I think I would be correct in assuming that this man has got to be one of the most decisive men on the planet. No? But here he 
has given us two options for titles. One, a wing and a prayer. Or the enemy. This has to stop. A wing and a prayer. I decided to look up. Like, what was the origin of this saying? And Webster defines it as without much chance of success. And this is why you can't trust mainstream sources. Merriam-Webster is a flagship in the dictionary game now. But that's it. That's, that, was, that was the extent of their definition. But then I headed over to Grammarly. And on a wing and a prayer describes doing something difficult or dangerous while relying on divine help or luck. The phrase was inspired by G. Hugh Ashcroft Jr. He was an American pilot of the B-17 Southern Comfort. Returning from a bombing run over Germany in a crippled plane, Ashcroft told his crew, quote, those who want to, please pray. News reports called them the crew that prayed the plane, their plane back. This, is, uh, this inspired the line in the 1942 movie The Flying Tigers uttered by John Wayne's character. She's coming in on a wing and a prayer. In 1943, a song titled Coming In on a Wing and a Prayer was written by Harold Adamson, Adamson and Jimmy McHugh. The term has evolved to take on a figurative meaning. Or a second title, JBP, Uncle Dad, Dr. Jordan B. Peterson, clearly the enemy of this has to stop. I mean, this is clearly descriptive and actually forms the main narrative of the piece. So for me, it's an easy choice. And it's your first one, DJBB, BP, <laughs> DJBB. Call him uh, Deej for short. So he's second guessing himself right out of the gate. And this is not the Jordan Peterson that I've come to know. All right, let's hit the rest. It has to stop. God lift from me the intolerable burden of my ignorance, arrogance, willful blindness, bitterness, and resentment. You know, I like JBP when he's flying off the cuff, when he's got his notes on what he wants to talk about, but he's not reading. We saw him read recently when he did The Actor, and he was taking down Justin Trudeau. And he's reading here too, but it's a little less uh, less rehearsed maybe. I don't know, but I just like it when he flies, uh, you know, kind of like I do. No edits. Yeah, just let it roll. You know what you want to say, but this is a poem, and he wants to, he wants to get it right. So I get that. God lift me from the intolerable burden of my ignorance, arrogance, willful blindness, bitterness, and resentment. Not surprisingly, if you know Dr. Peterson, he goes straight for self-reflection and personal responsibility of his role in creating life on this planet and around himself. This is not shocking if you know the man's content, history, and character. And it's uncommon these days, personal responsibility that is. So immediately he looks inward, which I think he's inviting you to do. And then he goes on to say, as I pray that others rise above this, the same faults and temptations. As I pray that others rise above the same faults and temptations. I keep it a little more, like this, this is definitely a poem, but also a prayer. And my most common prayer seems to be, God, continue to heal me of my ego, judgment, and pride. And help me to see your path. 
because mine sucks. And the more I get off mine and the more I get on yours, the better my life is. So that's my most common prayer, I think. And then, because I don't like to pray small, I pray for the world to be healed of ego, judgment, and pride. Imagine. Like, to me, that's the filthiest. And I see it in my own character. And I want none of it. But if you're going to pray, pray big, right? I watched Fox News release a message this week. There are terrible things afoot under the surface of our society. And the perpetrators are coming for you. And coming for us. So. I watched Fox News. I watched Fox News release a message this week. This is obviously hyperbole. There are terrible things afoot under the surface of our society. And the perpetrators are coming for you and coming for us. Starting off with Fox News is interesting. When I think of the liars in mainstream media, Fox is not usually my main concern. And here, Dr. Peterson gives another example of his objectiveness in his mind. He sees the lies on both sides, the stoking of fear, the selling of hopelessness, the ego, judgment, and pride of we are right and they are wrong. It's a sin. And it leads to our own personal hell. Words are important. And Dr. Peterson chooses them carefully. And I don't believe that there is one word in this poem of a prayer that has been placed there by mistake or without great thought as to the appropriate at the, pro the appropriateness of every single word. Dr. Peterson does not make these mistakes. He's very thoughtful and thorough. And so he starts off with Fox News because I consider him mainly a, you know, a moderate, right-leaning individual, even though, like myself, he has strong left leanings. You know, he probably has the personality type of a liberal, which I do, mostly. But words are important. And he chooses them very carefully in everything he does, but especially in this rehearsed, written out prayer. And I will create the show notes with the full text of it in there, but I will also include the original link, which he includes the words, lyrics, or whatever you call them, to this poem, which is obviously a prayer. And then I watched the Democrats respond in panic and anger, saying, there are terrible things afoot under the surface of our society. And the perpetrators are coming for you, coming for us. Interestingly, he... <laughs> he goes from Fox News to the Democrats, which is pretty accurate, actually. <laughs> In more ways than one. Because... The majority of the media are left-leaning liberal Democrats, which is not surprising to me anymore, but it's actual fact, right? And so, again, interestingly, he describes the other side of the opinion as Democrats, which makes up all of media except Fox News and Newsmax and Crowder and McInnes and Shapiro, basically. Are there terrible things afoot, bubbling under the surface? Is something coming for you and for us? Ask. This is a strange question that he's put to 
twice in an interesting question. Are coming for us, is there? Yeah. Anyways, I got myself off track there. Um, and then I watched the Democrats respond in panic and anger. Panic and anger is appropriate language here, in my opinion. The far left media and the Democratic Party hate the plain facts and for their narrative to be destroyed by them. They refuse to even debate for fear of the truth and very obviously the apparent facts that we be brought to bear in those debates. So they avoid and promulgate the propaganda endlessly, feeling that if they tell a lie often enough, often, I say often, but the T is silent. How many people say often? I don't say often, I guess. But if you repeat a, not, a lie often enough, it becomes truth for many, and it has worked well. There are terrible things af afoot under the surface of our society, and the perpetrators are coming for you and coming for us. Are there terrible things afoot bubbling under the surface? Is he asking us to evaluate our own lives? I think so. Are there terrible things bubbling under the surface in our own lives? Yes. Hell yes. There is. There are. Think about your own struggles. How close are they to you? How close are you to conquering them? And how easily have you and do you succumb to them on a regular basis? And what does it take to beat them back and win? Is something coming for you and for us? Ask yourself how true that is of yourself in your own life. Ask yourself how true that is of yourself and your own life. Have you addressed all that? Are you concerning yourself with the dust? Have you addressed all that? Even if you have addressed all that, the answer is most likely that you do not have complete control over them. The issues bubbling under the surface in your life are ready to explode hot lava all over you, your life, and the people in it. What a powerful acknowledgement in your enemy's eyes instead of attending to the filth that obscures your own sight? Are you concerning yourself with the dust in your enemy's eyes instead of attending to the filth that obscures your own sight? Obviously taking from another biblical reverence, but a plank in your eye and a speck in your enemies. You, me, and all mankind to one extent or another are hypocrites. And I think that's what he's pointing out here. Do we want accusation, suspicion, discord, derision, and hatred? Actually, yes. <laughs> Look at what the heart aims for. So many of us find it impossible to answer the question, why do I, why do I continue to self-sabotage? Aim downward for the worst possible outcome, either subconsciously or consciously. The obvious honest answer here to this question do we want accusation suspicion discord derision and hatred is yes because that is what we create so consciously i think we have to turn away from that 
repent. Repent means turn away. Turn away from sin. Or just face the other way. Or the peace and prosperity and happiness that beckons to us at this moment like never before. Or the peace and prosperity and happiness that beckons us at this moment like never before. You know, if we truly loved ourselves, we would not accept the treatment that we give ourselves. <laughs> we would never accept doing to ourselves for someone else. If we saw someone else doing this to someone we care about, we'd speak up. We'd never allow another human being to treat us this way, but we do it consciously and subconsciously all the time. Man, for a short poem and prayer, this thing is jam-packed. Jam-packed. Who's the enemy here? Is it... Well, the enemy is ego, judgment, and pride. Projection. Lack of personal responsibility. The basket of deplorables? And is he talking to me? Right-leaning Trump supporters? <laughs> the basket of deplorables. He's not, he's not going out of his way to be politically correct here and to rub everyone's ears, is he? He's, he's shooting his gun everywhere. He's just spraying all over the place. Is it the freaks and the queers? Well, um, I'm a little bit of a freak. Sometimes... I'm more than a little queer. And I'm not referring to the LGBTQIA2 plus community. Did I miss anything? I think what he's doing here is taking a shot at leftist madness that running that's running wild in that community that I just mentioned, but also culture as a whole, entertainment, media. The freaks and the queers. It's a pretty interesting way to put it. Is it the plumbers and carpenters and tradesmen and managers who work honestly and diligently during the day and the soldiers who stalwartly defend the borders and protect us? So I get that this is rhetorical questions, but who's going to blame anything on the plumbers, carpenters, tradesmen, managers that work honestly and diligently during the day and the soldiers who stalwartly defend the borders and protect us. I get it. It's a poem. It's a prayer. It's rhetorical. But why is he throwing that in here? Is it contrast? Is it the artists and visionaries whose expressions of unbridled creativity entertain and rejuvenate us and who continually offer to us an unending panoply of technological miracle. Man, his face just looks so pained through all of this. You know, Jordan Peterson is a, is an, a bright man. And I think the pain on his face must come from reading because I don't think he likes to read. Like, I mean, read his performances. I know that he read he did the um, audio book for his last book, 12 More Rules. And if you listen to the first chapters of that book, he sounds almost dead. Like, he is not in a good place. He's in Russia, and he's in the middle of treatment for benzoid dependency. This is it the artist's? And visionaries whose expressions of unbridled creativity entertain and rejuvenate us and who continually offer to us an unending panop pan panoply? What's a panoply? Panoply? Panoply. Panoply of technical, technological miracle. No, again, rhetorical, again, a prayer, 
again, very creative and artistic, rhetorical, but who's going to say yes to any of these groups? Is it the institutions that guide and protect us that so many lived and died to erect and establish, which for all their faults have served us so well? Do we want revenge or justice? The first time I heard this was on a men's group call Thursday morning, 7 p.m., 7.30 a.m. EST. If you want to join in, there's a link on my Facebook page, and I'll put it in the comments below. George, my Greek friend, um, not that that matters, but he is George the Greek, just like so many other George, <laughs> George the Greeks. He played it for me on the call. And when I heard, do we want justice? Uh, do we want revenge or, revenge or justice? I made a joke. <laughs> yes, we do. Revenge is justice. That's what I screamed out in the middle of watching this without stopping. <laughs> yes, we want revenge. Revenge is justice. Or do we want contempt? Do we want contempt or mercy? No. no. We haven't got there, have we? Do we want contempt or mercy? Do you well, of course we want contempt. We'll, we'll look at what is in our hearts. Look at what we, continue br to br we, we continually bring into existence. What is our proclivity to hold a grudge when injured or wrong? Or wronged <laughs> wrong or wronged but think about it how easy is it for you and how long have you held on to a grudge and how difficult is it for you to forgive and move on yeah so compare how easy it is to hold a grudge when you're injured or wronged and compare that to the difficulty of mercy, forgiveness, and grace. Do we want war or peace? Well, mostly we want war for the above mentioned <laughs> reasons. Because this is what we constantly bring into existence. We're not going next door and hugging our neighbor who we don't like for whatever reason because he called the bylaw officers on our, when our fence blew down. <laughs> it was my fault that the fence blew down, but I hate you now because you reported me. <sighs> Do we want war or peace? And again, we are fighters when wronged and slow to forgive, provide empathy, empathy, and mercy. And what are you aiming at in your heart of hearts? I see even the best of men degenerating into the exchange of blows. And we see this every day too, especially in social media. I see even the best of men degenerating into the exchange of blows. In one word, ego. Ego, judgment, and pride. God, thank you for continuing, continuing, and continually healing me from this filth. <laughs> I see even the best of men identifying the enemy in our neighbors and friends. I, I, I see even the best of men identifying the enemy in our neighbors and friends. Judgment. I see even the best of men falling prey to cowardice and self-righteous anger. Pride. I see even the best of men falling prey to cowardice and self-righteous anger. Pride. 
you degenerate into exchange of blow, expression of ego. You identify the enemy in your neighbor, judgment, and you fall prey to cow cowardice and self-righteous anger, pride. Hey, I got a real good theme going here, don't I? It needs to stop. It needs to stop. I need to stop. You need to stop before it's too late. Who is the enemy here? Wow, he takes a really deep breath there, closes his eyes and breathes deeply because he knows the answer to this question. Who is the enemy here? It's you, not them. Not what do you criticize about someone? No, what do you criticize about others? Somehow, you hate about yourself. You are the enemy. The snake in your heart, the lies on your tongue, the arrogance of your intellect, the cowardice of our refusal to see. Yes, yes. Yes, and yes. The snake in my heart, yes. The lies on my tongue, absolutely. The arrogance of my intellect, uh, yes. The cowardice of our refusal to see, yes, 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 yes. All of it and more, all of the above, we're all the same to varying degrees, so yes. Man, the sooner you grow to accept the dirty, filthy part of yourself, the part that aims down, the dark shadow that goes straight to hell, the sooner you can move to change that and become a better person because you're really not the, you're not really that good a person. Like on the scale of good to bad, where would you put yourself? <laughs> Trust me, you're not that great. I mean, I, I mean, you're great. I love you, but you could do so much better. And I'm talking to myself. I am no different than you. The enemy is that which divides to sow discord. The enemy is the pride and the fear that stops us from lending a hand across the divide. The enemy is the great and eternal adversary of mankind. And if we demonize our brothers, our comrades in arms, do we not precisely call that dread spirit forth? Uh, another. Um, rhetorical question that he knows the answer to, to already. Yes, to all of it. We do, and worse. The enemy is that which divides to sow discord. The enemy is pride and fear that stops us from lending a hand across the divide. The enemy is the great and eternal adversary of mankind. And if we demonize our brothers, our comrades in arms, do we not precisely call that dread spirit forth? Absolutely, we do, and much worse. Have we not yet learned? Courage, trust, truth, love, even unto your enemy which is yourself. Interesting. Again, I've really talked up the fact that Jordan B. Peterson is brilliant, a deep thinker, a great communicator, and a perfectionist. And here he mixes up the last word <laughs> in this phrase. Have we not yet learned courage, trust, truth, love, even unto your enemy, 
which is you. In this instance, he says, which is yourself. I know it's the same thing. Your self. Your being. Your ways of being. It's you. You are the enemy. And why can't you learn these truths? Courage, trust, truth, and love for yourself. Wow, it's power. God, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. May what is highest guide our vision. May what is highest open our ears. May what is highest guide our tongues. And may we pray, fearful of the hell we could so easily and carelessly create. Deliver us from evil. Shine a light into the corners of our dark hearts. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Oh, wow. I mean, the emotion on this man is courageous and brave. And he puts it out there all the time. He's not afraid to get emotional and to express his emotion when moved. Many times being brought to tears in interviews and presentations where he thinks about God or the sad state of mankind very often moved to tears. And man, he's in the right frame of mind to give this. I'm not sure how many times he shot this. But this is, this is technical genius, perfection, as far as I can see. Yeah, it's not memorized, and yeah, he's looking off camera, but this, this man is dialed in to the message he's trying to communicate and to his raw emotion. Talk about bubbling at the surface. This man's emotion bubbles over. Well, like some, Like I've never seen before almost in public life. Very courageous and brave. Jordan Peterson liked one of my comments one time, and the comment section went crazy because they said, JBP just liked your comment. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. I also commented back, like, it's probably Julian because Julian runs the social media accounts as his son, amongst other things he does. Jordan Peterson commented, on this post, on a reply on this post, and I have it as Elaine, Ileana, Ileana Doyle, and two weeks ago I clipped this, she had seven subs, I think she's changed her name since then, her uh, YouTube name, but in the YouTube comments, you can go look at the most actively comment, commented on comment, this is the top one, I'm pretty sure, Justin Peterson, replies um, Ilania Doyle comments I know you'll probably never read this out of the thousands of comments you get but here goes I'm a 17 year old girl from New Mexico and your ability to express your thoughts in an extraordinarily clear way and your bravery to always speak up for what you believe in inspires me every day. Nothing makes me happier than seeing you come to Christ. That was her comment. She had seven subs at the time. Jordan replies, listen to what you say, my girl, and don't say anything you don't want to hear yourself say. Start young. You won't regret it. Wow. He's only replied to one comment on that post, and that was it. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I love you. I'm out.